Hello fellow readers, Hannah here, and today we're gonna talk about my 2020 goals. So obviously it is a little bit into January of 2020, but I still wanted to come on here. Obviously I'm back to making videos and I wanted to tell you about my goals for the year. I apologize that I haven't made any videos in three weeks. Basically what happened was my husband took off from before Christmas until um, into the new year and I didn't read. <laughs> I mean, I didn't read, I didn't make videos and do anything. So yeah, but we're back at it now. I wanted to sit down and go through my goals for 2020. First up, I am setting my Goodreads goal higher than I normally do to 100 books. Last year I set it to 12 and then kept raising it every time that I would meet that goal, but I found that it, my hope was that I would not pressure myself into reading and therefore I would read bigger books and be less afraid of time constraints and put less pressure on myself. That did not happen and in fact I ended up reading less and and just not pressuring myself at all. And which is fine, except that then I wasn't reading. So it kind of backfired. I read 49 out of books, um, 49 books last year. And I said my goal by the end of the year was 48. So I did make that goal, but it wasn't as many as I would have liked it to be. So Goodreads goal is set to 100. Then I have a couple of book challenges that I'm going to be doing. The first one, I will leave links to all the challenges down below. The first one was created by a Slack that I'm a part of, the Rogue Book Coven, and we created a reading challenge for 2020 that is 24 challenges to get you outside of your comfort zone reading. And so the, the challenges that they created are read a book that is a favorite of a friend or family member, read a book that has a queer Jewish protagonist and or is by a queer Jewish writer, read a book heard about on a podcast or other social media, read a book that was written by an indigenous Australian Australian author in the 21st century, read a Pulitzer Prize winner or nominee from any year, read a book by an author who lives within 25 miles of you or is as close as possible, read a book that is tr a translated short story collection, read a book that was written by a politician, read a Shakespeare retelling, read a book that has titled not numbered chapters, read a book that is on body positivity by a body positive author, read a book that is set in parts of the UK other than England, read a book that is a graphic novel or print comic that started as a web comic, read an own voices YA novel, read a nonfiction about racism, anti-racism, or racial injustice, read a book that has a rainbow color in the title, so red, yellow, orange, green, blue, indigo, or violet, read a book that is about or set in East Asia, so China, Japan, etc. There's um, a whole list, but I, I just put those as the examples, not that I'm only going to read those two. There's plenty of other countries that make up East Asia. Then a book that you've previously DNF'd, a book of poetry by an author of color, a book that is published by a not-for-profit press, a book about the refugee experience, a book about an animal rescue, a book that is at least 500 pages long, and finally a book that was published the year that you were born. For me that would be 1987. So that is that challenge and I'm super excited to do that. Then I'm also going to be taking part in the the If You've Got It, Read It challenge set by the girls over at Spine Breakers. I'm really excited. This is also has 24 challenges, so I'll just read through those really quickly. We've got read a book you've had on your TBR in the past, read a book you've owned the longest, read a book that is not a typical novel, read your longest book, read your shortest book, read a sequel, read a cover by, read a book you bought on a friend's recommendation, read a book with your favorite color on the cover, read a book from your most owned genre, read a book that you've had so long you don't remember what it's about, read a book by one of your favorite authors, read a book by an author you've never read before, read your most recently purchased book, read your most recently published book, read your least recently published book, read a nonfiction book, read a book that was gifted to you, read a book that you meant to read last year, randomly choose a book from your TBR, read a book that reminds you of someone, read a book you bought because of the 
online book community, have someone else choose a book from your shelf for you to read, and read a predicted five-star read. So for those, I am counting only books that I owned prior to January of 2020. So the January book of the month that I'm getting wouldn't count. Anything else that I pick up during January wouldn't count. I'm gonna keep track of those just so I don't count them towards this. And then finally, I want to do the Modern Mrs. Darcy reading challenge. This one's much shorter. It's only 12 challenges and those are read a book published the decade you were born, read a debut novel, read a book recommended by a source you trust, read a book by a local author, read a book outside your genre comfort zone, read a book in translation, a book nominated for an award in 2020, a reread, a classic you didn't read in school, and three books by the same author. So those are my basic goals. Other things that I want to accomplish, I want to read more trans authors, non-binary authors. I also want to continue reading diversely and having the authors of color that I read being a large percentage of my reads for the year. And yeah, just making it through the books I already own because I own too many. So I know this is a little late, but those are my goals. Let me know down below what your reading goals are for the year. Are you participating in any reading challenges? And that is it for me. I will see you next time. And until then, stay twisty.